talking a little bit more about money guide. Uh, what I'll do today is take everybody through a fairly high level of uh, how we approach financial planning. Um, of course, how I think it can certainly add value to your practice, and also kind of address how uh, Money Guide integrates in with uh, obviously a fine piece of technology like the one you're currently using, which is Asset Book. Um, so we're able to pull in account data, and I'll be able to show that to you very easily and uh, explain how all that stuff works. Uh, so. As I kind of go through the system today, um, I think you can probably type in questions if you want on the widget, and uh, we'll kind of roll through some of those at the end. And I'll try and um, you know keep the keep the content down to about 30 minutes. I know everybody's got lots on their plate to do today. Uh, so before I jump in, I just want to point out, you know, Money Guide again is a goal-based financial planning application. So for those of you not familiar with us, um, we really take a lot of pride in what we do out here. We're what's called a best-of-breed application. Uh, which simply means that we do one thing, and that's where all our passion is, and we integrate with other companies that do their one thing incredibly well. Um, so instead of trying to be all of everything, well, we're one thing at a good price, and uh, we're going to always focus on making that one thing incredibly good. Uh, so we've had you know quite a bit of success over the years, and um, we've been doing really well on a lot of the financial planning surveys and, and technology surveys that have been uh, done throughout you know the recent years. Uh, through the FPA and certainly have a pretty well adoption across the um, industry. And today I kind of want to show you why I think you know some of the things that we do have led to that. So we're completely web-based, and you're always just going to be able to log in. And when you log in to Money Guide, you're always going to be using the most up-to-date version of the software. So I'll kind of show you how we integrate as I go along, and uh, even more importantly, show you or, or talk to how there are different ways that you can integrate with Money Guide, depending on what kind of technologies uh, you have in your practice. So I'm going to go ahead and pick a client and take you through you know, a lot of the features inside of Money Guide, as well as address these integration things, because I know integration is an incredibly um, popular topic these days, and I do a lot with the integrations out at Money Guide. So uh, one of the things that we're able to do is, of course, pull in data from asset books seamlessly. Uh, and the way it works is quite simple. Uh, when you're inside of Money Guide Pro, uh, you're actually going to click this little manage integration link over here on the right. And you'll be able to click the asset book logo inside of Money Guide and search for a, a household or a client inside of asset book. So in this case, you know, let's say I want to link up um, Bob Johnson's accounts from asset book. Now the nice thing about this integration is that it's seamless. I mean it's completely using the web to do all this data transfer. So really what that means is that you, the user, have a nice clean experience. You don't have to sit there and download files, save them to your desktop, upload them into a different system. You just go in here, you type in this last name, click an Add button, and when you click Done, all the accounts are going to show right up on the screen, and you can pick and choose which ones you don't want to bring in. So in Money Guide, we have significantly more account types than any other application because we need to know the savings components for all these different types of accounts. So you're always going to want to make sure that you just uh, select the type of an account it is on this screen, and then once you link it up going forward, it's always going to be up to date. Every time you go into Money Guide Pro, it'll be up to date for you. So you just click Continue, and just like that, I can go into my, the profile of my client, and before I jump into the system, I can see that all my account data is there. Oops, sorry, having an issue. I'll show you that in a different view in just a second. And I'm using, uh, just a heads up, all my integrations are all pretty much test sites, so test sites go down all the time versus obviously production sites. So sorry about that one. We'll keep going and I'll show you some other ways we integrate as well and I'll have that fixed before the webinar is done. So let's go ahead real quick and also talk about other ways that you can integrate Money Guide. Uh, the reality is that a lot of folks probably on this phone and, and a lot of folks that use Asset Book also have a CRM in their firm. And I get asked this all the time, like what is the best way to integrate with Money Guide Pro, if I have kind of, for lack of better words, like you know, redundant integration. So, for example, a lot of Asset Book and Money Guide users will have uh, Redtail as their CRM, or they'll, or they'll have Grindle as their CRM. And of course, you know, Asset Book feeds into both of those systems as well as Money Guide. Well, the reality is that you actually want to feed Asset Book into your CRM, and then have your CRM feed into Money Guide Pro. So for example, let's say you were using uh, Redtail, very popular CRM in the industry. Well, when you would go into Redtail, you'd actually have your dashboard full of accounts, 
And this is really being fed by asset book. And if you want to bring this account data into Money Guide, you do it from asset book, Redtail, Money Guide Pro. That's the order that you want to do. So if I wanted to bring all this account data into Money Guide, I would just click this little integration link for this contact uh, Maggie investor in this example. I hit this little send to link. And just like that, it populates a brand new client. And behind the scenes, this is all working seamlessly through the entire platform. Um, and this is also the screen that you see when you link accounts directly from Asset Book into Money Guide. So you have a few options there. And hopefully that can kind of shed some light on what makes the best sense. So if you don't have a CRM uh, or you don't have a CRM that's you know, an industry-related one that you know, Asset Book will feed into, um, you want to go directly into Money Guide like I showed you earlier. But if you do have one of these big popular industry CRMs that we all feed into, go ahead and you know, make sure you're linking up accounts uh, directly into the CRM and then into Money Guide. And it will make more, for a more seamless experience. Ultimately, what you want to do is you know, make sure that whatever software you're in the most often are the ones that you kind of use as, as the hub. So with all the integration stuff aside, uh, let's go ahead and start diving into um, you know, Money Guide Pro and some of the features that we have. So again, I mentioned we're big fans of goal-based planning. Uh, so we'll go into a goal plan, and I'll kind of just take you through it head, you know, from the start to finish. Now, our software is very modular. Uh, so in other words, what you're able to do is if you don't want like insurance or you don't want to do long-term care or estate planning, we well, can turn all those modules off whenever you do a plan. And there's a little feature over on the right called My Way. Well, you just click this little blue tab. The interface comes up, and you can turn on or off whatever sections you don't need in any particular time inside of a plan. Um, so this will also drive the report package. So in other words, if you aren't addressing life insurance and you go run a report that would in typically include life insurance, well, if you turn this module off, it automatically removes it. Uh, so in this case, I have a couple of modules turned off, but let's go ahead and just uh, go through the rest of the report now that you see that you can turn all these little things off very easily. The next link and really how you navigate through Money Guide is on the left. So there's a left-hand navigational toolbar. kind of forces you to go through the software intuitively, which is just you know top to bottom. Uh, so this client here just happens to be somebody that's uh, currently employed, making uh, really, really close to retirement, about three years away, uh, making about $150,000 a year. Um, let's go ahead and look at their goals, because after all, this is really the meat and potatoes of what Money Guide Pro is all about. We're huge into goal-based financial planning. So what we want to do is make it very easy for you to work with your client. We have all kinds of data gathering forms to choose from to get information. Uh, you can access those by just clicking this little support link up here. It launches our support center where you can get all kinds of information, um, unlimited technical phone support. You can email. We have a live chat feature that you can just start chatting with somebody on the support team. But if you click the client marketing and questionnaires link over on the left, you'll have all our data gathering forms. So these are available. Um, you can you know, print them for free if you want as a PDF. There's a you know, 16 page, a four pager, a one pager. The one pager is, of course, really good for prospecting. Uh, my favorite is the four pager. And I'll pull that one up just to show you an example of what that looks like. There we go. And so there's just a nice cover page. Here's your first page of data the client needs to enter, the second page, and then the back. And you can brand all these with your company, uh, company logos as well. Uh, so we call it a four-page data gathering form, but it's really only two pages of data that your client has to enter. So I'm a big fan of those shorter ones because the reality is that the hardest part of planning isn't entering data into the software, isn't preparing the plan, it's getting the data back from your client. So in my opinion, the shorter those data gathering forms are, the faster the all-around process is. So in this case, what I have here is a bunch of goals for my client. I got a retirement living expense, which is kind of designed to um, – cover, you know, food, roof over their head, bills, things like that. And then I have some more discretionary goals broken out. Uh, I have a college goal where we have our uh, child here, Emily, going to pretty much the best college in the country, which of course is Virginia Tech. Uh, we also have some car goals in here. So I wanted a new car for Margaret every six years, and I wanted a new car for John every four years, or so that's what they wanted anyway. And the other thing that you can do with these goals is set up these different time horizons for them. So for travel, you know, our client was like, look, we want to make sure we have a good travel goal, but we don't necessarily need to travel 
until the day we die. So what they did was they said, let's just make sure we can travel for the first 20 years of retirement. So we set up all these different goals. Uh, we have the add buttons down below that you can click on any goal you want. Uh, we even have a goal builder. So if you want to use the software right there in person with the client, you can go in and uh, go ahead and just start adding goals right through the goal builder. Now this is a more wizard type of approach to planning. So what we have here is really just a step through process, an educational way to get the client thinking about different goals. Our first page of the goal builder is the retirement period. Um, so you know, what is the current age of the client? What's their target retirement age? How willing are they to work past that retirement age, or that target retirement age anyway? Um, you know, what is their life expectancy? Uh, there's a little life expectancy calculator that's built into the software as well. Now, this is real nice if you have, um, you know, a client that might have a history of, you know, poor health. You can go in, or you know, maybe the, the client's a smoker. You can go in and include those things, and it'll recalculate their life expectancy. Uh, we're using a mortality table for all of that. And there's a nice visual timeline to show the different expense periods uh, we'll be having throughout retirement. There's also a carousel of goals you can pick and choose from. So these are really for uh, discretionary goals. And then the next page is just um, kind of drilling down to that basic living expense need. So when we talk about basic living expenses, there's, of course, all these different types of bills that they're going to have. Um, but they might really just be happy living off of what they're currently making, which you can certainly do in the software very easily. However, if they have a major expense that's going to go away in time, there's a real easy way to address that. Um, down at the bottom, you can make expense adjustments. So in this case, I just said, by the way, you know, our client wants $6,000 a month, but they're going to pay their mortgage off in 2020, and it's $18,000 a year. So basically, the software is just going in and reducing this $6,000 a month living expense at that future point in time, knowing they'll have that mortgage paid off. And we can see that summary of all our needs, wants, and wishes that we entered. You can see that our mortgage reduction for that basic living expense is kicking in. And if you want to see how these goals are distributing over time, uh, there's a nice simple graph to help with that. Since we have a lot of goals happening at different points in time, um, we're able to see that here with our car goal happening every four years. Uh, here's our travel goal coming to an end. Um, you know, later on in life, they're just living off of uh, basic living expenses. There's even a very quick way called auto retirement goals up at the top right. And if you just don't really want to get into all the detail of, of uh, you know, the more sophisticated way to enter goals, we'll just click auto retirement goals and it'll create a need and a want at the snap of a finger based off their employment income, basically designed just to keep them living at 100% of their current lifestyle. So over on the left, we'll go back to our navigational toolbar. And again, we just keep moving down. So the next step, of course, is to enter in the resources that they have to fund these goals. So we can go in and add retirement income, uh, Social Security, for example. Uh, you can put in different strategies for that. Uh, we actually have a maximization feature that I'll show you in a minute. Uh, you can add in pension income, annuity income, you know, any kind of consistent income throughout retirement is what you'll want to enter in this section. And of course, we'll have our investment assets. Now, I mentioned and showed earlier that all the investment assets that you have in Asset Book are going to come in automatically. So you won't have to enter any of that every single time you open this client up or go through our client portal and uh, let your clients log into the portal. All their Asset Book data is going to be up to date automatically. But you know there are going to be instances where you have uh, accounts that you're not managing that you need to manually enter. So it's very easy to do that. If you want to enter that in detail, you can use these Add buttons down here to literally go in and you know, enter, um, let's say, for example, I enter a 401k. I could go in and enter every single holding in their 401k if I want. And then we'll use Morningstar behind the scenes to allocate that holding automatically for you. I could also go in and just be very quick about it. So, for example, this summary totals add button will just give you the ability to add in all those held away accounts very quickly. You can just go here, add, you know, total employee sponsored plans, and if they're making any additions in those accounts and be done, with adding those manual accounts in you know, about a minute. The other thing that you're going to want to make sure you do is put in additions. And that's really the savings component behind Money Guide. Uh, we don't do very detailed cash flow planning where you go in and you fill out this long in-depth budget and whatever the shortfall or surplus is every year is what the client's saving. What we think about is you know, what is somebody actually putting in these accounts 
that are going to fund their retirement goals. And that, as far as we're concerned, is what the client is saving every year. Uh, so we want to be able to put those additions into their accounts. And then we also want to know, and we ask this on the data gathering forms, you know, is the client willing to save any more money? So if they have to to fund these goals, are they willing to save more money? And we'll use all this information to save you a ton of time when it comes to making recommendations for the client. When it comes to modeling uh, scenarios where you have a house out in the future or maybe your client has a business and they want to sell that business down the road, uh, we help you with that. One of the you know, downsides of planning softwares, and in fact, Money Guide Pro was you know, victim of this as well before our last release, was that you know, we ask the client or you to go and enter a value that something is going to sell for down the road. So for example, we're going to say, tell us how much you're going to get for this house when you sell it in 20 years. Well, nobody knows that. So what we did was we went in and gave a, uh, a range of values, and we have a stress test that kind of coincides with this feature as well. Uh, so let's say, for example, I have a house that's valued at 450000 My client uh, wants to sell this house in, say, 2025. We'll just go in and put our own year in here. And we think the house is going to grow at about 5% a year. We're not certain of it, but we think it will. You can put a low expected and a high value in for what you think you're going to get, and you can use a nice little calculator here to help you come up with these numbers. So you can go in and put in you know, cost basis, debt payoff, sales expense, or a tax rate. We'll calculate these numbers for you automatically, and you can round them and plug them in right here. And then when you go look at the plan, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the probability of funding goals based off the low expected high value of the future sale of these assets. So it's a great way to look at you know, the unknown, um, you know, knowing that we have no clue really what exact dollar amounts we're going to get for these types of uh, biz business or home real estate sales down the road. You can also enter in all your insurance policies. Uh, Money Guide Pro has a needs analysis for life insurance, long-term care, and disability. So always important to enter those types of policies here uh, if you're trying to analyze if there's an additional need for um, insurance. Then you enter liabilities, and that'll feed you right into our net worth statement. Uh, so this is another feature that's available in our client portal. Uh, very nice because, of course, the client can log in, see their net worth, and whenever they log in, they're always going to be seeing up-to-date account values uh, powered by asset books. So the next step in this process now that we just finished all the data entry. So that's really all the data entry that you need to do in Money Guide, with the exception of plugging in their uh, risk score. And this is a very unique feature to Money Guide. So what we call this is loss tolerance. And I think this feature coincides a risk tolerance questionnaire very well. Um, because let's be realistic, you know, I don't think risk tolerance questionnaires do a magnificent job, and I think the vast majority of advisors will agree with me, on really determining uh, what level of risk a client can handle in the market. You know, at the end of the day, what we're really trying to determine is What's the maximum amount of pain and agony a client can take before they pick that phone up, they call their advisor, and they say, bail me out. You know, get me to cash, inevitably lock in those losses. So this is a feature designed to really educate, what a, educate your clients on what risk tolerance is really about. The questionnaires don't really get into that very often. Uh, so what we did in this feature was we gave the client and the spouse the ability to score themselves. So what they can do is they can go in and update their own individual risk scores. And the idea behind this is, you know, you ask the client and you ask the spouse to rate themselves on a scale of 0 to 100. How risky do they feel that they are? Uh, where, you know, 0 obviously being pure cash or putting your cash under the mattress and, you know, obviously 100 being very, very risky or full equity or, um, you know, full global market or something along those lines. So what you can do is you can put in the risk score they give themselves. You can do the same thing for Margaret. And then you can pick a household level risk tolerance for the individuals. And we're going to summarize this and bring it all into context in just a second. Uh, so in this example, here's you know, John and Margaret's score. We can pick something in the middle. And we're going to be able to summarize what all these scores mean on this page. Uh, so what this does is it goes in and says, what does that risk-based portfolio look like? You know, what kind of average return would that portfolio look like, how much you know, stock, bonds, and cash would it have, or if you do alternatives, that would show up there as well. Um, another important feature, uh, clients, and this is a lot of research has been done on this, but clients like 
to know how they compare to other people like them. Uh, so this bell curve does just exactly that. It is comparing these individual scores to other individual or other either single or married individuals in their demographics. So we can see that here's how they scored. In this example, our client is about an average risk taker. Obviously, if the thick black line was farther right or further left, we'd know that they are not average when it comes to risk score. And then we take it a step further. Um, so when we take it a step further, we really get into the meat and potatoes of what you know risk tolerance is all about. And what we're doing is just showing what this portfolio would have lost during the bear market. And we also have a stress test that runs the plan against this loss so we can show them, look, if this happens again, you're going to be okay. And we're going to plan for that. And we're going to educate the client on setting realistic expectations. Because these plans, everything that goes in the money guide, it's usually like 10, at the very minimum, like 10 years. Uh, typically, they're 20, 30, even 40-year long plans. And they're going to go through market losses and downturns in that long of a time. There's just no way around it. So we want to make sure that clients understand that this stuff is going to happen. But we're planning on it. And we're planning and we're making sure that they can get through those times. Uh, we also do allocation in the software. So we'll take all those ticker symbols that come over from Asset Book and we'll determine their current allocation in addition to the accounts that you enter manually. Um, so we're able to see what the, how they're currently allocated, what that return would look like, great recession loss, um, standard deviation. You can customize all these asset classes that you see on the screen. So there's about nine or ten that come out of the box. And then we can look at their target band. So where are they currently allocated? And what are we recommending to the client? So here's where they scored on their loss tolerance. And here's the portfolio that we're recommending. You could change the recommended portfolio very easily. And you can customize all these portfolios that we see in this list as well. Uh, there's even a efficient frontier graph down at the bottom that plots everything. So from there, it's really on to results. So at the end of the day, you know, how is our client doing? Or is there anything we can do to improve their situation? Uh, so in this case, we did. Um, we took their current situation, was, which was looking really, really bad, and we made some recommendations to get their probability looking significantly better. Now, how did we do it? Um, a few different ways, and I'll show you that in just a second. But basically, here's what we're telling the client they need to change. We detail everything. Um, you can go in and you know drill down to more specific details if you want, but we're basically changing a lot of their goals around, uh, recommending that they work a little bit longer. And the way that we do that is through a couple of features, uh, one called the play zone. In the play zone, what we do is we give you the ability to um, go in and work with the client. So what they're able to see is maybe, you know, maybe they don't like their recommendations. Maybe there's plenty of things they would rather have, and they don't really need a 99% probability of success. This is ultimately a Monte Carlo result. And if you know a lot about Monte Carlo, you're not really typically shooting for 99%. You're usually shooting for something in the 70s or 80s. Um, so you can go in very easily, and you can change different assumptions in the plan right there with your client. Very interactive. Um, you can move all these different goals around, see what happens if uh, they work a little bit longer. You know, maybe we can get them to take more money when they retire. And if you like the changes that you make, well, you can do, just go and make that your new recommendation by saving this. I won't do that here because I kind of destroyed the plan. If you want to get more detailed, you can click the what if worksheet. Now the what if worksheet is going to let you do up to four different what if scenarios all at once. So this is a more detailed page. I'll be the first to admit that it absolutely um, has a little bit more learning curve than the rest of the software. Uh, and the reason is because we want it to be very flexible for the advisor. This is where you go if you want to get really detailed with your recommendation. So if we scroll down, uh, we have the ability to change you know, return assumptions. You can go in and change the uh, before retirement and during retirement portfolio allocations, we could adjust for fees. We could change the inflation rate. We can change every aspect of their goals. We could change future tax assumptions if we wanted to. Uh, we can even go in and implement different strategies. So what if we wanted to recommend converting some of their qualified money to an annuity with a guarantee? Uh, we can do all that on this page recalculate and see how it affects their probability of success. It's a very powerful way to 
present your client with different options, or you can just use the play zone and create one recommendation for them. The other option, of course, is a, a button called SuperSolve. Now, when I came to this plan, I had already hit this button, so our plan was looking really good. But sometimes you come here and your plan is not looking good. Uh, so when you hit SuperSolve, what it basically does is spits out recommendations for you automatically. Uh, so in this case, I'm telling the software, you know, what do I need to do to get 82% probability of success in this plan? So it's going to go in, and it's going to tell me what to change things. And it's looking at federal, state tax code, um, RMDs. It's trying to prevent uh, early withdrawal penalties. Uh, it's a very, very sophisticated calculation um, designed to really just save you a lot of time. Uh, so you can click this button, have a good plan, and you're all set. Now, if you want to take it a step further, uh, you can certainly do that. Um, that's what the Social Security button is up here at the top right. Now, when I click this, what it's going to do is it's going to present um, six really popular strategies that are out there. Uh, for Social Security, taking it at retirement, at full retirement age, at age 70, or some of these other fun ones like file and suspend, restricted application, et cetera, et cetera. Now, we're going to show you a few different things in this feature, one being what is the age of the client actually going to start you know, receiving benefits. Uh, the other important pieces that they're going to want to know are what's the maximum, or I'm sorry, the lifetime benefit going to be for each of these strategies. And it's pretty wild. I mean, you can... Um, take it at retirement, in this case, get about $1.2 million uh, out of the benefit. However, if you can afford to wait, you'll actually get $1.5 million in a different strategy. So you're ultimately getting $300,000 more from the government. And then what we do is, you know, some of the things you, you as an advisor is going to have to deal with is if you're telling an a client to wait till 70, well, they might have some concerns. You know, what if they're concerned about uh, dying early, and then obviously that strategy of waiting didn't really turn out so good for them. Uh, that's what the break-even point is all about. The break-even point goes in and shows you how long the individual needs to live to make that strategy work out for them. And then the last thing that we show you is the probability of success for each plan. So you can pick the strategy that you want to implement, and then it'll take you back to your super solve page that's already gone in and created recommendations for you. You click update. And just like that, you have your new plan in here with better recommendations. If you want to present the plan, you can do that just by going to the online presentation, or we can create paper reports. Um, I'm a big fan of the online presentation. I think this is great if you have a conference room. You can put it up on the big screen. If you work with clients remotely, this is a great way to present the plan as well. Uh, and it just goes through different things like um, net worth, shows the results, current versus the recommendation. There's a nice page explaining you know, what a lot of these calculation methods mean and how they work. Uh, you have access to the play zone. So if you're showing them your recommendations and they don't agree with those recommendations, well, just hit the play zone, go right in and, and change them right on the fly, right in the middle of the presentation. Very easy to do. The other things that we have in the system are stress tests. So you're constantly dealing with client fears and trying to manage those. Uh, and that's what stress tests are really all about. Uh, this first one deals with if you have clients that are locked up in um, you know, one security. In this specific example, my client has 18% of their portfolio locked up in IBM. And so what happens to their plan or their probability if IBM loses half of its value or loses all of its value? Uh, the bear market test. So we looked at that loss tolerance feature and we told our client, look, you need to be willing to ride out a 22% loss. Well, what happens if that, that happens? Uh, that's exactly what the bear market test does. It looks at that great recession loss for the portfolio that you're recommending and hits their plan with it today. Uh, and when you do things like this, you, you're really trying to center around funding needs. I mean, the wants and the wishes, they're not as important when you're literally talking about you know, a, an equivalent to a loss equivalent to what we just had four years ago. I, I think that'd be obviously devastating. So if that were to happen, if you can get needs, you're doing pretty good. And I think your client would be okay for the most part. I don't want to say okay losing that amount of money, just implying that they would be okay knowing that at the very least they can fund their needs. Um, the special asset test. This is the one where I mentioned uh, having a low, middle, high value for the sale of a future asset that's you know not not a, an investment asset um, like like money in Wall Street. Uh, so in this case, we 
we're incorporating inheritance in the future. Um, obviously a major assumption. So my low value for the inheritance was zero dollars. So it wasn't a guarantee that they were going to get it. Um, however, we put in what we thought we'd get, and we put in a high value as well. And we're just running the plan here based off those low, middle, high values and showing the probability of success. And then my favorite stress test um, kind of deals with uh, what advisors have to deal with on an ongoing basis, which is unfortunately the media pumping unnecessary amount of fear into the minds of everybody. Obviously, that's just uh, me talking, but that is how I feel. And what we're looking at now is the ability to address that. This is a tool for you to deal with that type of scenario. So let's say your client sit, sitting at home reading the paper on Sunday, and there's an article on the front page about inflation destroying their ability to retire. Well, you can go in and address all those types of things that tend to be what clients get afraid about. So for example, inflation being higher, outliving your assets, um, you know, social security being cut, or returns being less than expected, or health care costs you know, jumping up at a significant point down the road. Uh, you can go in and just move the sliders around for those assumptions, change them, and again, we're really shooting for making sure that we can fund needs if these types of things happen. So I can go in and say, what happens if Social Security is cut 35% and inflation in, uh, goes up a percent over the course of the entire plan? Um, very nice, very easy ways to address all these things. And then we have our action items. So what do we need to do to get started today? And what should our clients set for future expectations? So if we needed to make a, a recommendation for working longer or you know, changing some of their goals around, those are future expectations. And then actions they need to do now. Um, so in this case, they need to reallocate their portfolio. You'll also have things on here like save more money or work longer. Uh, we also timestamp the reports, uh, so their net worth and their probability of success. So every time you review these plans with the client, we can timestamp that result so they'll have a way of seeing where they've come from in terms of their long-term plan and, of course, in terms of their net worth. I mentioned that we did have life insurance, so I'll just touch on some of this stuff briefly for the sake of time. Um, in this case, we're able to go in and show uh, – <clears throat> What happens if John were to die today or if Ann were to die today? You know, how much insurance is needed? What do they currently have? Is there an additional need? In this case, there is not one. And all our assumptions are down below. We did something very similar with long-term care, uh, where in this example we're showing the blue bar is representing their portfolio if no long-term care is ever needed. Um, the blue bar in the middle. Uh, which eventually turns to orange, represents what happens to their portfolio if they go into long-term care without a policy. And the purplish bar represents implementing the policy that we're recommending, which you can scroll down and uh, enter all of that in down here. Uh, there's even an uh, estimator for long-term care costs. So there's a calculator you can click on, and it will show you the long-term term care costs for the states as well as major cities in each state. And for the folks that like lots of detail, I'm going to jump back real quick and just show you that we do have lots of different cash flow details and things like that you can see in the software if you want. I'm a big fan of this for the advisor. I think at the end of the day, the advisors really need to believe in the numbers they're seeing. Um, whether or not clients need to see this level of detail, I guess, is um, you know up to you or up to them. But we do have all these types of things where you can track you know, the individual years and things like that in the software. I'll show you a few other ones as well. It's just cash flow graphs. Um, here's a more traditional cash flow chart, line iteming the details of every single year. And if you want to make reports, it's pretty easy. And you can go in, and I'll show you a very simple report that I'm a big fan of. Um, I like to keep it really short and sweet. Um, you know, a lot of the advisors that I talk to really like that. They don't care for, you know, 200 page long financial plans. It's not that we don't have those in Money Guide. Um, we just, I, or I just feel that a lot of people that I talk to don't really want to present all that to the client. And the truth is, I don't really know. I think that it probably confuses the client a lot of the times. Uh, so this is a really simple 10-page report. That's actually 14 pages, but this goes through their goals. Uh, here's that graph just showing how the goals distribute over time and how inflation impacts them. And we just jump straight to our net worth page. And this is just the detail behind the net worth. Here's our risk assessment page. 
And then, you know, here's where they currently are versus what we're recommending. And all the changes are over on the far right in the column that's labeled change in value. And if you ever want to see more reports that we have in the software, um, if you just go to our homepage where our 14-day full version free trial is that you can actually integrate with Asset Book while you're inside of the free trial, uh, you can also go to the very top and click the link that says sample reports. And here's a whole, um, you know, whole bunch of options for you. There's even one in here that is 217 pages long. It's a good example of everything you can pick and choose from because you can certainly make um, custom report templates in the software very easily. And the last thing that I'll touch on is the client portal. Um, so I mentioned earlier that when clients log in, they're able to see things that are up to date, courtesy of our integration with AssetBook. So when the client logs in, this is basically the interface that they see. Uh, they can you know, move around the different tabs up at the top. They can see their probability. They can see their net worth. And they have access to the um, features I was showing you earlier, like the one that was uh, called What Are You Afraid Of? Like this addresses a lot of the concerns that we see uh, clients or investors having these days. They can go to the play zone and do very simple what if thing. They don't really get to that detailed what if worksheet, but if they want to go do um, some simple stress tests, they can. And this doesn't override the advisor data. It actually gives them the ability to save as a client favorite. So if they go in and make a scenario, they can save it as the client favorite, and then when they come in, you know, their next meeting, you can actually pull up what they thought about doing for their retirement needs um, versus what you were recommending to them. So that's kind of a high-level overview of how the software works. Um, we have all sorts of different pricing models. Um, we do individual pricing uh, for just a solo one-man shop or one-woman shop, and those uh, are $1,300 a year. And we have discounts with different custodians. We have team pricing for firms that work um, and have multiple advisors or work as teams and kind of service all the same clients. We even have um, enterprise pricing if you have, you know, usually like 15 or 20 advisors. Um, but what I'll do now is I'll see if there's any questions that came in uh, through the uh, little webinar widget. Yeah, Kevin, we have one question here and okay. uh, currently, and it says, will you ever push data to Asset Book? And they said, I'm thinking of cash edge account aggregation. This would be less expensive than to use bio accounts through Asset Book. Um, I guess uh, a key thing that we would want to determine is: is there, like, are you trying to do performance reporting if we're pushing that kind of data to Asset Book? Um, because we're currently talking about some new uh, new integrations that we're going to be doing to expand the current Asset Book integration. So we're going to be pushing their net worth, which would include, you know, everything, the liabilities any aggregated accounts from um, Cash Edge if you had that linked in. Uh, I think we're going to push the probability of success meter over. Um, don't currently have a way to push data. Uh, however, I'm always open to that type of thing and I'm absolutely willing to consider it. I just The truth is I, I really don't have a whole lot of users taking advantage of Cash Edge currently, but uh, that could absolutely change. Uh, so. Uh, oh definitely something we'll consider. Okay, we have another question. Uh, Kevin, the next question is, what is the team pricing? Um, the team pricing is pretty much based off of uh, a firm's ADV. So if you report uh, ADV to the SEC, <laughs> sorry for the bajillion acronyms, um, we base it off of the number of investment advisors in the firm. So if you have, you know, five investment advisors in your firm, the team pricing is $3,000 a year and that gives access for all five advisors, gives access up to five assistants. Um, the firm owns the data, and uh, then it goes up from there. So if you have up to 10, it's uh, $6,000 a year, and up to 15 is 9,000, and then it, then it goes on from there. Okay. All right, that's all for our questions. I don't see any other questions. Any, if anyone else has an additional question you'd like to ask, uh, feel free to do that now. Um, but Kevin, we thank you for your time today. That was very informative and very helpful. And I'm sure for folks considering your package, uh, that's just what they needed to see. Well, thank you very much. Always appreciate the opportunity. And uh, hopefully I can get up to the uh, beautiful location where your <laughs> facilities okay. are located. Okay. Well, I tell you what, Kevin, can you provide us with contact information? How can people get in touch with you? Absolutely. Um, 
to contact Money Guide, if you just hit this uh, contact us link on our homepage, moneyguidepro.com, our support number is up there, and for sales, our number is on here as well. So uh, 800-841-5312. And if you Very want to speak good. to me personally, my extension is 131, and again, my name is Kevin. All right. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Again, we really appreciate your time. Uh, and we look forward to a long and lasting relationship with you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks, you have everybody. a great day. Take care.